Exchange emails, just like that. I have my Exchange folders already set up. I have my Exchange to-dos and my Exchange notes immediately. But I also have access to all the Mac OS X technologies in mail, even on my Exchange email. So Spotlight, for instance, I want to do a search for a sales presentation, instantly searching the Exchange data. And you notice there's an attachment here. It's a Microsoft Office PowerPoint. I get Quick Look to preview that live within mail, whether or not I have Microsoft Office installed. And you know, <laughs> I, I have data detectors here, so they spot uh, an address, a contact, and I can put them in my address book. I can even, with one click, map a location. So all those technologies integrated in with my Exchange email. But you know the applications also work together in just the way most natural for the Exchange workflow. So for instance, if I have a meeting invitation here, it shows up in my uh, mail inbox. And I can accept it with one click right inside of mail. Or if I want to see that invitation in iCal, I can just open it right up there and see it in context and accept it with one click in iCal. And now that I'm in iCal, you'll see that I have an integrated view of both my exchange calendars and my personal calendars. Now, this integration ex extends also to address book. So in address book, I have an integrated view of my contacts, both my exchange contacts and my personal contacts. I can search the exchange global address list, and I even get my exchange contact folders. And here's a cool one. If I want to set up a meeting with people in a particular exchange contact folder, like this product team, all I do is drag that contact folder out of address book, into iCal, pick a time slot, and I've just scheduled a meeting. Okay, and finally, the, one of the most requested features for integration between iCal and Exchange is the ability to schedule those meetings, taking advantage of availability information for people and rooms, and Snow Leopard delivers. So if I go into this location field and type uh, building, for instance, you see it's searching the address, or searching the global address list, it finds me the briefing room, and when I look for available meeting times, I click here, I see the conflict that exists for this invitation, but that's not a problem because I just ask iCal to find me the next available time, and it reschedules the meeting for me. Just like that. So I hope you can see that when you move your Mac from uh, home to the office, we've delivered ex uh, exchange integration just the way a Mac user would expect. Thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. So, Exchange Support requires the latest server from Microsoft, Microsoft Exchange Server 2007. And with Exchange Support built in Snow Leopard, it's somewhat ironic that we have it at no extra charge, while Windows PC typically require an extra product to get Exchange Support. So, that's. That's Exchange, and this is kind of a little tour of the various areas of focus in Snow Leopard. Lots of refinements, powerful new technologies for all of us to innovate, and Exchange support to fit perfectly in businesses. So that's Snow Leopard, and Snow Leopard will be available for all Intel Macintoshes, past and present. So how should we price Snow Leopard? We've priced Leopard at $129. And we want all Leopard users to upgrade to Snow Leopard because Snow Leopard is a better Leopard. And so we are pricing Snow Leopard at the incredible price of <laughs> $29 for Leopard users. And if you have several machines, up to five, you can use a family pack at $49. <laughs> 
Snow Leopard will be available this September. And today, we are making available a near final version of Snow Leopard, a developer preview, so that you can make sure that your application runs great on top of Snow Leopard. So that concludes the update on the OS and in fact on the Mac. Now I'd like to turn to Scott for the iPhone. Thank you. All right, let's talk about the iPhone. It has been an incredible year for the iPhone. It was less than a year ago that we released iPhone OS 2.0, and with it, the native SDK. Now, this allowed developers to go beyond web development and build truly native apps. The response has been staggering. Developers have downloaded the free SDK more than a million times. And these developers have been prolific in building apps and posting them to the App Store. There are now more than 50,000 apps on the App Store. <laughs> now, we've been working really hard, too, to build a huge and growing user base to run your apps. Apps from the App Store run on all iPhones and iPod Touches. And we have already sold more than 40 million iPhones plus iPod Touches. Now these customers, they love downloading and running apps from the App Store. In fact, on April 23rd, we crossed 1 billion apps downloaded from the App Store. That's in just nine months. And I'd like to say thank you. <laughs> thank you to our customers. And especially, thank you to the developers who've been working so hard to build these great apps for all of our customers. You know, we've heard some amazing stories from our developers. And we put a little video together to share some of these stories. Let's go ahead and roll that now. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that I could just travel the world while making games. After Dizzy View was launched, we could finally make that happen. For us, that's really what it's all about, creating great experiences for the fans. Man, if, if I could see the fetal heart tracing on a mobile device, there's not a, a doc in the world that wouldn't want to be able to do that. When I was a practicing physician, I had a direct impact on patients' lives. Now, through our application, our sphere of influence has dramatically grown. When the SDK was released, we said, yes, it's possible now to create the games we've been dreaming about. It's always been my dream to travel around and make my own games. And we took a stab at it, and it was pretty hard to get your game published. But when the iPhone SDK was announced, that was when I knew the opportunity was right, and it was really going to be something special. We finally made a game that we were really happy with, and we submitted it. About one in the morning, we looked and we saw Dizzy Bee available. We just exploded. We were so excited. Finally got, our, got a game published. A female physician is sitting uh, at her departmental meeting. She has Air Shabobi running right beside her, and she starts to notice some changes that worry her, so she quietly grabs her keys and leaves. By the time the nurses first recognize this and say, uh-oh, you know, we may have a problem, and they call her, she says, hey, I'm in the hospital, and you know, I'll be right there. I was in San Francisco last year during the World Series, the Phillies versus the Rays, and I was waiting for a flight to come home at uh, the airport. 
there are a bunch of Philly fans watching the game on TV, and in the middle of the game, the iPhone commercial that we did came on. So they all pull out their iPhones and download the app right there. They're like all excited because they can go take the app with them when they get on the plane and not miss anything of the World Series as they're about to take off and go home. I created Game Loft to be able to come back to the roots of the gaming uh, experience for users. Progressively, it has become a 